recording. And we're live. Or on Memorex, it doesn't matter, but you'll be watching it on Memorex, but we're live recording right now. A new episode, allow me to be frank. Uh, spring games are underway. March Madness is sneering. The Devils are sucking and the Nets are soaring. Seton Hall is the ship be sunk. <laughs> and this is going to be one weird NCAA tournament. Yes, it is, Frank, and it's good to be back for another episode this week. Um, Seton Hall had a huge game tonight on the road at UConn. No, with at Newark. At Newark, excuse me. Um, uh, clinging to slim March Madness hopes and uh, hoping to keep them alive. And, uh, you know, things were close. They don't deserve in, to be in the tournament. First. They don't deserve to be I think it's... I think it's pretty clear after tonight, but I mean, they, you know, they had a good first half and then it ended on a poor note with uh, UConn taking the first lead. And then uh, second half, it just all fell apart for Seton Hall. Uh, UConn separated itself. It was, you it know, was really it, not it, close. By the way, for the fourth straight game, they got called for a four point play. Yeah. That's been happening a lot with them. They lately. love doing that. They lo- 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 love fouling a three point shooter. And on the other end, Seton Hall, uh, I think, had a season low in foul shot attempts tonight, too. I mean, UConn's defense and just the whole the whole game, pretty much, uh, you know, it was it was UConn just breaking away in the second half. Seton Hall is not going to win another game. They are not going to win another game this year. I mean, really, their only shot is is going deep in the in the Big East tournament. That's their only shot of making they're, the they're, uh, March Madness. They're in the first round of the Big East tournament. And the East isn't even that good this year. No, they, they, they are trash. They are total trash. They, 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 they just stink it up every game. Last year, they had a good team. This year, they had, they're had they just not good. They're not good. Uh, they, they've had a couple of injuries, but, you know, it's, it's just... It's just they, 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 it was embarrassing that they lost to uh, Georgetown and Butler, both teams that, that are terrible. Uh, UConn's a good team, and they had leads on UConn. They had big leads in the first quarter, the half, and they just, they, they just, uh, the twenty to four run. I mean, yeah, and they, that was all strokes. They just never recovered from that. So you had the feeling though that they were going to lose. It's just like it had that type of Seton Hall. All right. What in the hell is James Harden doing? Okay, he's going for. All right, he's just interviewing, I guess. But he took off his shoes right on the court. Oh, my God. Well, James Harden made his presump- presumptuous return to Houston tonight, and the Nets ran away with that one, too. No. If, 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 if they're healthy, if they're clicking, if Kyrie's not being weird, this team could win the NBA championship. Yeah, and, and think of it. Look how, that, Frank, they're a dominant wagon right now even without Kevin Durant I mean uh, James Harden has played a lot better than I could have ever expected that's why he's James Harden and now the Nets Nets are getting contributions from Nick Claxton too who finally made a season debut and he's been killing it ever since I mean they had the uh, the rough night on Monday where they almost blew the lead but but, uh, killed it in overtime I mean, Harden is just Harden is just a beast. I mean, over the last month, he's just been a, an entire beast for the Nets. Yeah, and, and mean, that's really how it's gone. Here's a question: If the Nets win, where's their fucking parade going to be? <laughs> Did you hear uh, Evan's idea? No, I didn't. Boat on East River of fans lined up on the uh, allowing fans to line up on the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, and on each either side of Brooklyn uh, Borough Park and uh, Manhattan uh, Battery. That's not a bad idea. Oh, okay. He's uh, oh, he's giving the shoes away. He's signing them and giving them to somebody. 
If the Nets win the NBA Finals, they need to find a way to honor New Jersey as well, of course, where they started. Well, that would be nice. I think the way it's playing out, I mean, if all goes well and, and they do stay healthy, I think it'll be a, a Nets and Lakers Finals. And this big three could beat LeBron. I think LeBron is going to be bitching about he didn't have enough help, even though he has Anthony Davis, if, he, if and when he returns. Yep. Uh, well, uh, they're allowing people in games in New York, but it's like totally fucked up. Of course. You have to like get a, uh, a COVID test and then proof of the COVID test before entering the, uh, the garden in the Barclays Center. That's insane. Of course, the, de- the Devils, they just take your temperature. Yeah, Frank, you uh, you went to the game last night with Roan. How was that? That was okay. Of course, the Devils stunk it up again. Must have been good to be back in there in that building, though. Yep. First time in 357 days. I, I mean, the Devils' special teams have been putting the special in special teams. I mean, their penalty kill is terrible. And their power play, is, it, 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 it's like New Jersey Transit. It keeps backing up and stalling and never going anywhere. Yeah, they just can't get out of their own way, honestly. They're, they're awful. I mean, they, they had a power play yesterday. And uh, Miles Wood just held the, 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 the puck behind the devil's net for 30 seconds of a power play. Like waiting to set something up. I mean, where do they, where do they go from here? Like, what's the next step? Like, how how many years away are the Devils? Probably about three or four. The uh, Shiro completely fucked this up. Completely fucked it up. The PK Subban trade is an absolute disaster. John Hines was a terrible coach. And uh, what they got to hope is that the Seattle Kraken want to take uh, get a star, a big name star, to attract fans in st- uh, their first season, and they will, and they'll take uh, PK off the Devils' hands. At this point, PK's ability pretty much screams expansion team. At this point, yeah, the best days are behind them clearly. It is like the Monstars came and took all his ability. Yeah, because it's not even like he was declining that much in Nashville. I mean, last year he was minus 21. This year he's like minus 4 or 5. Uh, I, I I can't remember the last time he had a, a goal. I, I, I can't. He He's just like... I, I can't remember the last time he had a big defensive play or a big hit. He just like stands there. I mean, he does nothing. And he was on the ice, of course, when the Islanders scored their first goal. I've seen him give the puck away many times. There was a play last week where someone passed the puck to him. It hit off his skate and then ran it up right right on the uh, doorstep for an easy goal. Oh, my God. I think it's safe to say that we won't see playoff hockey uh, at Prudential or Madison Square Garden this year. No. Now David Quinn's on the hot seat too. Which is ridiculous. It's only his second year. Yeah, he really has not been here too long at all. And the uh the uh the Rangers have had a lot of just weird fucking shit happen this year. Yeah. I mean Panarin uh, being uh uh taken out by Putin and uh D'Angelo Upset he wasn't in Washington for the uh, insurrection of the Capitol. Yeah. It's really just a bizarre year for them. <laughs> I mean, you heard about that, D'Angelo, right? That's basically the whole thing happened. I and mean, he got in a fight with a couple of teammates. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, they, they were upset that he's a Trump supporter and he had things to say about the uh, Capitol siege and. Uh, Got went at it with some teammates, and that was it. They got rid of him. Yeah, yeah, he he supported the siege. I mean, which is messed, which is messed up. But at the same time, too, then you look over at like 
the Yankees, who are still employing Domingo Herman, who uh. physically abused his significant other, which I don't know how that's tolerated in sports, in, in, in society. Uh, uh, but in a, they're going to point right. to the fact that he got his year-long suspension, yada, yada, yada. In an age where your words automatically will lose you your job, words and, and you know, the actions should speak even louder than that for something that's totally, there's no room for that at all. And you shouldn't be given a second chance. At least now they're at, they're starting to uh, take it seriously. I mean, the domestic violence, it was completely ignored up until about 10 years ago. Really the Ray Rice Completely thing. ignored. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it, it, that, that happened, it was almost like, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Well, Frank, now it's looking like Herman actually might wind up making the Yankees rotation. Out of, out of camp. Of course he will. I mean, the Yankees don't really have that great a pitching staff. Yeah, and the, and the thing, I think the logic behind it, too, is uh, they might actually try and save Davey Garcia's innings. And by doing that, they'd have Chachin and, and, uh, and Herman in the rotation, potentially as a six-man rotation. How or many uniforms do teams in the NBA have? I think too many. I mean, I just watched the uh, Houston Rockets wearing blue uniforms against the Nets wearing gray. Now I'm watching the Warriors wearing uniforms that say the Bay against the uh, Trailblazers that have black uniforms with the word Oregon on them. Yeah, they're just kind of pulling these out of the woodwork at this point. I, 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 I mean, what is it? You, you buy... Uh, the, the NBA Jersey of the Day contest, you can have uh, seven, uh, seven uniforms for every team. If they play a Monday game, they wear this uniform. They wear a Tuesday game, they wear this uniform. You know, at a certain point, it gets ridiculous. I, yeah. I, I understand wanting to have a regular uniform, a, another uh, two regular uniforms, the home and away, and then you go with a third jersey. I can understand that. And maybe you throw in a fourth as a retro. But beyond that, it gets ridiculous. The Nets should keep wearing their red and blue uniforms. That's all I know. That's a nice one. The gray one's not too bad, though. I don't. I, I like. I like that one. There's this black one that's like terrible. Yeah. You hardly ever see the red, the white uniform. It seems like they've gotten away from those short sleeve uniforms, which weren't really great. What uniforms? The entire league when they wore like those sh- tight short sleeve uniforms. Oh yeah, that, that 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 I think is gone. The players didn't like it. Yeah, that was a trend for a little while. It's really not a good one. I kind of like the look of them, but it flopped. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, well, one thing talking about uniforms and uh, in baseball. Hopefully we see the Mets wear their black uniforms maybe as a Friday night thing this year. They keep talking about it. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. I don't know either, but it seems like uh, that's getting momentum. Uh, I like the blue uniforms. I don't know about you. Yeah, the all blue that they were, I do like those a lot. Yeah, you know what I picked up today? I was uh, on my uh, afternoon walk. I walked uh, to uh, 22nd Street today, and there is a DXL, so I picked up a new belt. And I look over and I see a uh, 19, uh, well, the, uh, the, uh, the, the throwback jersey with the racing stripes in my size. Oh, wow. So, guess what I brought? You got it, Frank? You got it yep. on hand to show us? Yep. I don't, I'm not wearing it now, but of course, but yeah, I brought the throwback jersey with the racing stripes. That's awesome. When are you going to debut that? Uh, I don't know, maybe towards the end of the uh, spring training. I got to wash it first. Yeah. Frank, how have you been? Uh, have you been watching any spring training games? What What are your thoughts on that? So uh, I watched yesterday's game. Uh, the seven inning rule is just bizarre. Another uh, thank you, Mister Fucking Rad Man Fraud. And then Good for uh, spring training, though, I mean, yeah. these games are kind of tough to watch. And then the uh, after the uh, Mets. Uh, Won the game, they still got to bat in the bottom of the seventh. 
yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Yankees and uh, and Blue Jays did that tonight too. Brett Beatty, or Batty, whatever he is, he um, he was there yesterday. Uh, Pete Crow Armstrong looks like he's like a, a fucking uh, like a, some high school kid that snuck onto the team. Basically, he is a high school kid. He's like 19 years old. I don't think he's 19 yet. I think he's like 19, like uh, turns like 19, like next month or so. Wow. Well, uh, Batty actually hit a home run yesterday. Not yesterday, today. Today. The Mets, yeah, the Mets, uh, they got out slugged today, 14-9 to by the Cardinals. Uh, Jared Eikhoff and Jacob Barnes were not very good. But... Well, if Eikhoff sucks this bad, then he shouldn't make the damn team. No, well, I don't think Eikhoff's going to make the team. And uh, Barnes is just kind of a long shot at this point, too. I think we see Drew Smith probably beat him out, or maybe Lucchese or Yamamoto, whoever. Uh, you know, if they see yeah. one of those guys being valuable. Yamamoto actually looked good yesterday. Uh, yeah, Everything's- yeah. Yam- Yamamoto looked good yesterday. Uh, Stro- uh, Sh- uh, Stroman looked good yesterday. Stroman. His, his split change that he – learned this offseason looks very nasty yesterday i think he's gonna have a big year yeah. as long as he stays healthy i think i think he'll be a very good very good at the top of the rotation but uh i, uh, I think he's gonna be motivated to have a good year for sure i mean it's a contract year I think he's really going to be motivated. And the other thing, too, is like with the Mets, it really just comes down to staying healthy this year and if their bullpen can hold up. Yeah. I mean, uh, I like the the signs uh, that I saw yesterday. Spring training games are so fucking weird in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, they definitely are. Uh, But Nimmo has done pretty well so far. Pilar. Uh, Lindor hasn't gotten a hit yet. Fans are already complaining. Um, but I, I think it'll be a good year. I, th- I think we're going to see a pretty good team. Almora hit a home run. Yeah, I saw that. He seems to have changed his stance compared to last year, which is, uh, could be the Chili Davis effect. He did his best year offensively with Chili Davis as his hitting coach in Chicago, I'm pretty sure. Well, Chili Davis, hopefully he could help. Yeah. Thank God having him back, it'll make a big difference. Well, you know, I did that thing on uh, Saturday with the Bagel Boss and uh, Dwight Gooden. Oh, yeah, how was that? That was good. Uh, Dwight Gooden said that he, the, the batter he hated to face the most, that he could never get out, was Chili Davis. I've heard that before, I think. The guy's just, a, he's a smart, he was a smart hitter when he played, he's a Smart hitting instructor now. Yeah, he was like this kind of like underrated, under the radar guy with the Giants. Then he played a couple years with the Twins. I think he so actually was on the '91 did. Twins. Oh, really? Yep. And then, well, then he ended up on the Yankees, like '98, '99. Yep. So he got a couple of rings here and there. Speaking of hitting instructors, uh, Ryan Ellis, who they dismissed for harassment. This offseason, um, he was at Cespedes' showcase yesterday. Did you see anything on that? Yeah, well, fuck Cespedes. Cespedes couldn't hit breaking stuff last year, so don't imagine that uh, he's going to look too good this year either, too sharp. He is not going to – nobody's going to sign him. He apparently is telling his friends he wants to play four more years. It's like he looked done last year. Nobody's going to sign him. And the thing is, if he was hitting well last year – he wouldn't have walked away. No. That was so bizarre, too. That it, it seems like a lifetime ago. It doesn't even feel like last year that he was on the team. Well, uh, what do you think about uh, Big Dick, uh, Dick Pick Mick? Another just debacle of a saga that somehow he still is not fired by the Angels. <laughs> Which is just stunning. And the guy has blatantly like been cheating on his wife too. You know, you should have. The, the people should have realized something was up when he used the phrase "dry humping the reliever." Yeah, seriously, that's what everyone goes back to. I mean, 
That does a normal person doesn't talk like that. A normal person doesn't talk like that. Did you see Nick Francona go after uh, his dad and the Indians yesterday? No. What was going on with that? He just kind of blatantly said, like, his Terry Francona and uh, Chris Antonetti and the rest of the Indians kind of just were, like, turning a blind eye on Mickey. Like, they all knew he was, like, a horn dog and, uh, like, kind of, like, you know, having affairs and sexually harassing women and uh they just they didn't really care is what nick francona was saying he got he had a fallout with his dad hmm. uh again apparently they don't have a good relationship but um yeah he kind of just like called them all out yesterday uh, you know and and the mets hired him they knew he was doing these things he was a terrible manager and they didn't fire him they waited well, sandy, two full fucking years frank sandy admitted that they didn't thoroughly interview him, that they just kind of rushed to hire him because he was a hot candidate. And guess who pushed for that, allegedly? Uh, let me guess. Uh, Jeff? Yep, Jeffy boy himself. You know, it was. It, it's clear that Jeff was in charge. Jeff was everything. You know, things didn't start going to hell with the well pond until Jeff started getting power. And it just doesn't it piss you off because, like, where was this guy's qualification to run a baseball team? He was the son of an owner who played in, uh, who played briefly in the minors. Yeah. Thought he was on the team, too. I mean, I mean, usually the son of an owner gets a little smarter, but which him call didn't like Jeff Nelson Doubleday? No. And that's why he sold half his team, and he said, "Run for the hills." He said the baseball people are going to run for the hills there. Yeah, that's what uh, Double Day said. Double Day said that when uh, when uh, he did, he, he, he just got tired of fighting Jeff, uh, Fred, and Jeff. Double Day was the one that wanted him that, that basically like stepped in, called the uh, the Marlins, and made the Piazza trade happen. Yep. That was, like the last thing Nelson, that, that was the last thing that Nelson Doubleday did. Yeah. The last thing Nelson Doubleday really did with the Mets. You, you, you never hear of this, the, the sneak eating that Fred Wilpon did, didn't you? Um, I'm not sure. Now, Fred Wilpon was a baseball fan who was uh, a real estate holder. And he was a minor investor in the Mets. But... Uh, he got made the president in the Mets by Doubleday, who was the CEO. Mm -hmm. And Nelson Doubleday didn't own the Mets. Doubleday Corporation did. The Doubleday Corporation got sold to a German company. And Nelson Doubleday was supposed to take over the Mets as a sole owner. Fred Wilpon snuck in and got 51%. By going behind Double Day's back. Of course he did. In Will Pond fashion. Yeah, and that basically like fractured the relationship. Guess when that re relationship was fractured? Mm, early 2000s? Nope. Fall 1986, after the World Series. Ah. Uh. And Fred Wilpon wanted to get the, the, the plunge the Mets of a lot of the bad apples. So he made the decision that wanted him to trade uh, Kevin Mitchell. Which was a mistake. Yep. Trading Lenny Dykstra was a mistake. He wanted to make Greg Jeffries the face of the franchise and basically had Greg Jeffries reporting to him any time the Mets did, that Players did anything. Yeah, the whole locker room hated Greg Jeffries. whole locker room hated him. I mean, like, I mean, Dykstra's book talked about how what, what, what a punk Jeffries was. David Cohn said they called him the biggest crybaby ever to, that he's ever met. Dykstra was saying, like, he just didn't fit in with that clubhouse. 
he came up and he had his own bats and acted like he was like the God's gift to baseball. So he had his bats and wouldn't let any other players touch it, even veterans. So uh, Roger McDowell one day pissed on his bats. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> and the last game of the 1989 season, after McDowell and uh, Dykstra were traded to the Phillies, the Phillies ended the season, ended the last Met home game, I should say. Ground ball to first base with uh, McDowell on the, in the mound. Jeffries grounded out, and uh, McDowell and uh, Jeffries got into a fight. Yep, I remember that. And and uh, a lot of players in the Mets said that they that they wanted that, that uh, even though it was their own teammate, they were kind of glad to see McDowell kick his ass. Yeah, and I'm sure Lenny Dykstra was too. <laughs> I mean, McDa- Jeffrey, Jeffrey's, they treated it like he was the captain when he came up as a September call-up. And a lot of people said that's what hurt the 88 Mets. Yeah, he messed with the chemistry inside the clubhouse, no doubt. <sighs> and of course, Frank, what's, o- going on with, what's going on with the Dolphins? I don't know what's going on with Kyle Van Noy. Uh, maybe they just don't want to pay him and they want to uh, go with a cheaper option. I don't know. That's just so bizarre, though. They signed him to a four-year, $51 million deal with $30 million guaranteed last year. He had a very good year for them this year, uh, and they're cutting him after one year. I, I, I don't understand decisions that are made sometimes. They obviously did not want it to get out that they were planning on releasing him because then it said, oh, if they can't find a trade partner, they're going to cut him. But, like, pretty much they're going to cut him. I mean, there's nothing they can do about that. Everyone knows he's going to hit the open market. Uh, I just sometimes don't understand what these teams do. They're replacing him with Van Ginkle. Very good player. Van Ginkle had uh, a lot of big plays last year. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe they want Van Ginkle to play every day. That's, I think, what it came down to. And Van Ginkle's like a, a third-year player next year. I think, like, I think last year was his second year. Van Ginkle made a lot of big plays. Oh, my God. Have you seen what he looks like without a helmet? Who, Van Ginkle? Yeah. See that? No, I can't. You got to bring it up a little higher. Oh, yeah, the long hair. He looks like Carmelo Soprano. <laughs> he had a lot of big plays last year. Blocked punts. He good... uh, the f- forced fumbles, fumble recoveries. Sounds like a Brian Flores guy, Frank. He went to Iowa Western Community College and then the University of Wisconsin. Yeah, I know he went to Wisconsin. 48 tackles and five and a half sacks last year. That's pretty good. Yeah, so that's what it is. They want a cheaper option. Get the, yeah. the, the, the Van Ginkle. Van Ginkle was very good last year. But Van Noy was a leader though, and and he was also very good last year. So it's just like kind of surprising. I mean, the yeah. veterans probably aren't too happy about that move. As, well, you know, it, as, you know, it, you know, it's what, it's what the NFL is with the salary cap. Yeah, they're saving. So they're saving nine point seven five million against the cap this year. But they also got to eat a lot of dead money, like a good amount of dead money, I think. I mean, they owed him $30 million, counted like $15 million against the cap last year, made like, I think, 12, 10 or $12 million. Um, they still have to Now, pay the rumor I hear is play. the Dolphins are going to make a big run at Levante David. That could also probably be part of the reason, too. They want – and Levante David could have been the Super Bowl MVP if you actually look at the player who made the biggest difference. Because he shut down Travis Kelsey. Yeah, he did. He had a great Super Bowl. By the way, speaking of Super Bowl champions, did you hear the story that for some reason was like people knew, I guess, or knew and didn't know? Uh, Turns out uh, Terry Bradshaw hurt his elbow in his last season. And he missed most of the season... Because he went to a NASCAR race and got, like, tennis elbow waving the uh, flag. 
Oh, no way. Yeah. So he had to have elbow surgery and ended up missing most of the last year. And then he actually hurt his elbow in the Jets' last game at Shea Stadium. And that was his last game ever. Oh, my God. But in uh, March of 83, the Bradshaw had uh, surgery on his elbow because he had tennis elbow. Probably a lot of it came from the quarterback division, too. Mm-hmm. So he didn't want people to know he went for surgery. So he checked into a Louisiana hospital under a fake name. <laughs> and this was reported in 1983. The fake name that Terry Bradshaw used was Thomas Brady. That's so weird. <laughs> and like that, that like that was trending on Twitter today. That uh, someone dug it up and found the old like newspaper articles and like uh, did a story on it. That he, he used That's the name crazy. Thomas Brady. Oh my god! That took some voodoo shit. <laughs> uh, Jerry Thornton said it's like uh, proving that there's a glitch in the Matrix. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that, well, Tom Brady was about five at the time. And, well, yeah, did, like... and and I, I guess he used the, the, his same initials, TB. And he, I, guess he, I guess he went Thomas and maybe Brady because of the Brady Bunch show. Jeez. That's weird. Yeah. That is freaky. That is very weird. That That's Jerry Thornton spot on with that, too. There is a glitch in the Matrix, really. I mean, I, I saw that story today, and I was like, like, my jaw hit the floor. Speaking of things that were uncovered, apparently uh, Bauer's agent was telling Carabas and the starting nine crew that once those... Um, the social uh, Bowers media team or marketing team, uh, they leaked the merchandise, the Mets merchandise by accident. Bauer was ready to tell the Dodgers, never mind, and that he was going to sign with the Mets, apparently. The, 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 why is he letting the, 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 just, just continuing this story? The, does he, does he, do, the, 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 he is continuing to troll the Mets. They tell a new story every time. I feel like they're just making shit up at this point. You know, the more I'm starting to think about it, the more I think he would have been eaten alive by New York. Yeah. Because, you know, one bad game leads to a second bad game, a third bad game. He starts sulking, throwing a ball over the fucking fence. He would have been eaten alive by New York. It's also good that they didn't spend $40 million on him. I mean, I mean, he does not... He, 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 He's too much into me, 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 social media. He would have been eaten alive. This would have been like a Jack McDowell situation. I don't know. I don't know if you remember Jack McDowell. I don't. Jack McDowell for a couple of years was one of the top pitchers in baseball. Actually won to Cy Young in 1993 with the White Sox. So after the strike, the White Sox uh, tried to start trimming payroll. So the Yankees got him. And he had a bad year. He had a really bad year. And uh, there was one game where uh, he got like uh, knocked out of the game in the second inning and the fans were booing him. And Roger Mc- and Jack McDowell tipped his hat and then gave the middle finger to everyone at Yankee Stadium. Oh, my God. I'm sure they love that. Yeah. By the way, he was the pitcher on the mound when uh, – Griffey scored that winning run. Oh, really? Yes. And he was not a Yankee in 1996. Yeah, I bet. I mean, different times, but I think the Mets, uh, they built the roster the right way. And and Jack McDowell also soaked soaked that uh, the Yankees made him shave his beard and I mean, he, he had like a like a, a like a like a like a two or three year period where he was like one of the best pitchers in baseball, and then he just went down the tubes fast. Didn't handle New York well. And it was just one. Of, Frank, if the Mets gave Bauer forty million a season for the next like two or three years, 
what are their odds of signing Lindor and Conforto long term? Which it sounds like they're going to do, and they might actually sign Lindor before the season starts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just it just it, there, there's certain people that don't have the personality to pitch in New York. Uh, look at the look at Randy Johnson. Randy Randy Johnson didn't handle New York. Yeah, I'm one of the best pitchers of all time. I, I think Trevor. I think Tre- the more I think about, it, the more I think uh, that Trevor Bauer would have been a disaster. He doesn't have the temperament to be to pitch in New York. The Randy. Do- I'm glad you brought up the Randy Johnson addition because that kind of reminds me of Kluber almost, like with the Yankees getting Kluber now as when they got Johnson. Well, no, that, no, that's different. Still. That's different. Getting Johnson and getting Kluber are completely different. Well. Obviously, there's differences. I mean, Kluver's been hurt the last couple of years, but like uh, great they, pitchers in their prime. They got Johnson in at a time where he was still believed to be good. Yeah, Kluber is a re- reclamation project. Kluber is a hail mary. Kluber is if 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 he doesn't do good, they'll just cut him, and it will be no loss. He looks sharp tonight too. Mm, well, we'll see. I mean, he's now, had. Gary- He's had shoulder problems, which are, which is uh, sometimes worse than elbow problems. A kiss to death, usually. Um, Gary Sanchez, Frank hit another home run tonight too. Whoop de damn do. <laughs> How about uh, Aaron Boone eating a pacemaker? Yeah, well, he actually got shoulder surgery back in 2009 he's only 47 so he was 36 at the time or no he was 35 at yeah the time. he had like a, a regular heartbeat back then yeah open heart surgery now he has a pacemaker that's really scary um you heard that come out at first and you know you're like oh boy but it turns out he's probably gonna be back with the team in a couple of days probably by the weekend or if not early next he might week. miss a week he might miss a week it, it's not like it used to be yeah. Well, Frank, I was saying this to someone earlier in a conversation I had. This is Boone's contract year. There's a chance he could hang it up after this year because of health concerns. And I would if I were him. Yeah, I think if the Yankees don't go to the World Series, I think Boone won't, not, won't be back. Cashman was saying he wants him for nine more years. Because he's his puppet. If I was a real manager, I'd be a real manager. If I was a real manager, there's strings on me. There's a lot of strings on me. I mean, I mean, Aaron Boone, uh, the Aaron Boone years, strings attached. Yeah. Well, they'd just bring in another puppet if if he left. Yeah. That's why Girardi got fired. Yeah, Joe Girardi, Joe Girardi like, uh, hung up the phone on uh, the Cashman. Yeah. So, Frank, uh, you see uh, Golden Tate got released by the Giants tonight? Well, that's no surprise. Yeah. Yeah, the Giants freed up the yeah, and they freed up eight and a half million, cutting him and David Mayo. So they got to get ready. I mean, uh, March 9th, next Tuesday, is the deadline for placing the franchise tag on players. Giants need to get creative. Obviously, the free agent two free agency two weeks out. Leonard Williams hitting the market. Alvin Tomlinson. I can't the believe J.J. Watts going to the uh, the Cardinals. I know two years, thirty one million. Oh, so much for getting a ring. I mean, they'll be pretty good, though. They'll at least be a playoff contender. Yeah. They're a, they're a playoff bubble team at best. If Kyler Murray... I mean, I know they stuck down the stretch, but if Kyler Murray didn't get hit, hurt in Week 17, they would have made it over the Rams. And it would have been more entertaining watching them in the playoffs over the Rams. Well, uh, I, I think the Seahawks could be uh, in trouble. They got to do something. They have yeah, well, more, the, more of the same, too, with Russell Wilson. Apparently, they weren't listening to him in all kinds of meetings. He stormed out, and more of the trade rumors, trade rumors. So, But he's saying he wants to stay. He'll be a Seahawk for life, I think. I don't think they're going to trade him. The Rams, who knows what they're going to do. 
I know now they got Stafford. I mean, if Stafford if Stafford could win in Los Angeles, that would be the biggest indictment ever on the Detroit Lions. I mean, you, you want to talk about losing an organization. And by the way, Jared Goff, Jared Goff is going to go to Detroit and die. Yeah, looks that way. The Lions, the Lions are just, the Lions are going to be terrible. You know, I said Thanksgiving is for three things. Food, family, and reminder that the Detroit Lions are an actual NFL franchise. They're just a nightmare of an organization and always will be. Talk about a curse. I mean, you could actually feel the sadness when you go when you see the yeah, the, the Ford Field when you walk by the, the Ford Field when you drive by Ford Field and walk by Ford Field. You can actually feel the sadness. Yeah, and it is sad being a Lions fan. So. By the way, I just want to send a special shout out to uh, one of our former co-hosts on this podcast, Avery Zaretsky, for uh, signing on with Barstool full time last week. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of course, I see him all the time. Yeah, good for him. He's think of it, Frank. That's the only like real job he's ever had. Yep. And tomorrow, he'll probably be laughing in my face. About Seton Hall or about the Devils? Well, the Devils like and Rangers I, like are I, tomorrow. Like I got two tickets for uh, the Devils Islanders, I had to get two tickets for the Rangers, and I'm bringing Avery. Tomorrow? Yeah. At Prudential? Yep. That's amazing. You guys got to film that. Yeah, we'll see about getting a little filming done. Well, you saw That's Ronda. Amazing. You saw Ron did his video. Yeah, I did. I did. It looked like a very fun time. He said it was like his dream to go to a sporting event with you. And you saw all the the, the sodas I got here. <laughs> did he come to the apartment? Yes. Oh, that's great. Were you screaming in the Prudential Center? Eh, not that loud. Was it quiet or like how was what was the atmosphere like? They had uh, a crowd noise. That felt like a little bit of white noise. Uh huh. There were a few Islander fans cheering. And of course, I was yelling to the, the uh, devil shoot the damn puck as they continued to pass, 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 hold, pass, hold, pass, back up, back up, back up, retreat, retreat, back, 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 back pedal, back pedal, hold, 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 pass, hold, pass, hold, pass, hold, pass, hold, power plays over. They probably heard you screaming at them, too. The limited amount of fans in there. Of course, you have to wear a mask if you, unless you have food in your mouth. Did you get food? Yeah, chicken fingers. Nice. The hot dogs at the potential center are pathetic. Yeah. Among the worst hot dogs I've ever had. They just don't know how to fucking cook a hot dog. Oh. I don't like getting a bad hot dog. I mean, a few extra minutes on the fucking grill, please. And then you put it under in a box under a heat lamp. That's not going to do anything to it. Remember when you got the chicken parm there? Yep. That just looked like the tenders. They just literally put cheese on the tenders. Cheese and, like- and uh, cheese and gravy, or. Sauce, if you uh, please. Yeah. What kind of sauce is Prudential Center sauce, though? Like you know, it's more like a pizza sauce that was left over from uh, some of the pizzas they have there. Oh, which also probably aren't very good, are they? Man, nah. it's cafeteria quality pizza. Yeah, I bet cafeteria quality pizza. The uh, thing I like, the, some things I like the most, they have good popcorn, of course, the popcorn stand was closed. They have good nachos, and of course, the nacho stand was closed. Why are those closed? Uh, limited concessions, I don't know. Thanks. 
Now I've gotten uh, t- uh, tenders in a hel- in a helmet before. I don't think they're selling the helmets right now, but and he didn't have the fountains open. He just had bottles sold yesterday. Ah, that's interesting. Mm. How many sodas did you get there? Four. <laughs> what Pepsi's? Uh, yeah. One of them was actually brought by a fan. Really? Yep. Were a lot of people going up to you yesterday? Yeah, we had about four or five people come up. And someone got you a soda? Yep. That was nice. Got uh, got Rona beer and me a soda. I was climbing up the stairs to go to the bathroom. I had someone, like, waiting for me at the top of the staircase. (laughs) That one ever happened to you before? Yeah, it's happened to me before. What's it like being like a celebrity like that? It's nice. I, I, that actually happened to me in Detroit, and then the guys left. Someone uh, wanted to take a picture of me. I said, just hold it right there. I had to go to the bathroom, and they were gone by the time I got out of the bathroom. Oh, my God. I mean, if they're pissed at me, that, that, that's on them. I, I actually sought them out when I got out of the bathroom. I really, really had to go to the bathroom. Don't ask Frank to take a celebrity photo when he has to go to the bathroom. He's got a full bladder. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I, the picture would not have come out good if I was leaking. Do people ever bother you when you're, like, eating or anything? Mm, not that much. That's a big thing that, like, celebrities and athletes and stuff, like, complain about. <laughs> but... Uh... This is really the pretty much the dead period of sports, though, Frank. Yeah, well, what you call the conference uh, tournaments are starting, so March Madness is coming close. Yeah. And Evan Drellich from The Athletic actually just posted a story that uh, sources are saying expanded MLB postseason and Universal DH are dead issues for 2021. I hate Rob Manfred so much. It's like only the good rules can't have. That that that, that fucking runner on base in seven innings. I I hear Man, Man, Manfred wants to make baseball, all baseball games seven innings. You know Man, Manfred uh, hears that song "Take Me Out to the Ball Game," and he goes, oh, "I don't care if I ever get back. I'm I want to go home after two fucking innings." Oh my God! Yeah, he might he might actually minimize baseball to that. He sucks. Well, Frank, we got March Madness starting soon. Conference tournament plays next week. More hockey. Spring training is progressing. Um, NFL free agency is coming up. A lot of guys are going to get released next week. I heard. Well, already started. It's already begun. Um, but yeah, let's get the baseball season and uh, only. A few more short shows until then so yep on that on that note um let's roll into some ask the tank all right you, you got a good amount of questions this week um john fullen wants to know fuck marry kill dan marino mike piazza or martin brodor <sighs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are my three favorites of all time I don't know. I really don't know. Who would you kill? Who would you kill if you had to kill one? Uh, I'd probably kill uh, Marino. I guess he didn't win the ring. <laughs> That's fucked. But true. Neither did Piazza, though. Yeah, but yeah. Front relevancy to the Mets. Yeah. Harrison Clark, Frank, wants to know, what's the best hot dog that is widely available in a run-of-the-mill supermarket? The best hot dog you could find in a run-of-the-mill supermarket is Nathan's. Yeah. You might be lucky enough to get Best Provisions, which is pretty good, or Sabrette's in the, the New York area. Oscar Mayer is trash. Ballpark is among the worst hot dogs I've ever had. 
Bar yeah. S is is like uh, kitty litter. I mean, uh, I mean, some some better markets might have Feltmans. If you get lucky enough to see Feltmans in a market, pick them up. But what about Boar's Head? Boar's Head's okay, but we're talking running the mill, and you don't see them in running the mill supermarkets. True. True. Dr. Sleep wants to know, will you be following F1 this season? If so, who's your favorite on the grid? No. What is that? I don't know one F1 driver. F1 is European open wheel racing. Oh, my God. Another person, actually, Frank Moore with the grocery store questions, wants to know what's the best hot dog bun they can get in a grocery store. You know, I've never been too particular about the buns. Pepperidge Farms got good ones. Yeah, Pepperidge Farm does have good hot dog buns. Uh, you know, just look at the uh, quality. If you see like a, a good golden brown bun, you uh, you can even get like the generic brand. I buy I buy Shoprite brand, or now it's it's <clears throat> bread and basket. My God! Wait, are they Shoprites going to be named bread and basket? No, that's just that they're naming their, their fucking generic stuff. Oh my God! Oh yeah yeah yeah. Bowl. I thought it was like bowl and basket. Bowl and basket, bowl whatever and, the fuck. Bowl and bread basket or something. Ugh, something stupid. Yeah. Although those, uh, they make good pretzels. Mm. Generic. It's just they're still the store brand. They, yeah. they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, don't try to act like fucking uh, whole fucking paycheck and, and give your things fancy names. <laughs> Paul Nixon wants to know what is your favorite flavor of Fago? Fago. I don't remember what I tried. What my favorite flavor was in Fago was. I mean, I, I that, did I have a fruit punch or orange? I think uh, something like that or grape would be my favorites. Mm-hmm. Fago is a good product, but not one that like I'm over to going to jump over the moon for. What is it? It's a soda company out of Detroit area. Ah. That uh, was made popular by the Insane Clown Posse. God. And they're found in a lot of, like, dollar stores. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a song actually called Blueberry Fago. I didn't know what a Fago was until now. I actually, I actually had a soda this week that was that, that's uh, made by rappers called Exotic Pop, and it's named after a guy named Big Mo, who's who sang a song called Purple Drank or Purple Stuff. How was it? It was a good, good. It was a decent grape soda. What's your favorite type of grape soda? Welch's. Welch's, yeah. Uh, but I tried actually. Uh, I had a, a, a grape soda that might have been better than uh, Welch's. Called Grapeco. Grapeco. Where did yeah, you get is, that? Uh, Alabama. Oh, nice. Joe at Joe C fifty six wants to know who's your national championship pick for college basketball. Uh, I got to say this: if Gonzaga doesn't win this year, they're never going to win. I think that's fair to say. And Michigan, obviously, was like a favorite, but they got blown out of the water by Illinois last night. Yeah, well. Who cares? A loss a loss this week is actually good for you. Yeah. If you're sure. a team like Michigan, you take that loss and say, you see, we got to be uh, we got to be on our guard. Yeah. 
And the final question of the night goes to Tomato Paste, who says over under 80 wins for the Phillies, 90 for the Mets, and 64 for the Pirates. All right, I'm going to go uh, over for the Mets, looking at around 91. I'm going to go under for the Phillies, looking around 78. And I'm going to go under for the Pirates, looking around 62. Damn, Frank. All right, I think, for me, I think over with the Pirates, I'm going to say. I, I don't think they're going to be over by that much, but I think they'll be over 64. Um. The Mets, I like exactly at 90, I think. I don't think they win the division. I think the Braves are going to win. The Mets are going to win a wild card, 90 games. I, I don't love their bullpen. Hopefully they, you know, they'll make it, they'll probably have to make a trade by the deadline or before the deadline for bullpen help, possibly a bat. Um, and and I, think they I, think will, I, I don't think they would hesitate this year to do it. No, it's just they don't have as strong of a farm system. That's the only thing. They have replenished it a bit, but. They would have to probably give up one of their top guys. Um, for the Phillies, I think over 80 wins. I think they'll be like 83, 84 maybe. I don't know if they have any pitching. No, but I think that they'll still be okay given their offense and their bullpen is, is improved a bit. So I think they'll be they'll be maybe like low 80s. Well, I, like I said, I didn't put them too far in the I put them around 78. Yeah, that might be fair. All right, Frank. Well, that's, I mean, it's uh, not like it's not like the Colorado Rockies, who I think are wow. going to lose uh, near 110 games. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, the, 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 two, the, the I think the Colorado Rockies are just are. It's just it's, it's just going to be a dreadful thing. And the uh, the Marlins say that they're going to have have 20 percent. Filled their stadium when the season begins, and I thought about that, and I said, "So do you think they're going to get more fans than usual?" <laughs> yeah. Or, or no? What about uh? So Triple A, we actually didn't touch on this. I don't think Triple A uh, is suspe- is um postponed for a month. To start All minor the year. leagues are suppo- postponed for a month. All minor leagues, and uh, everyone's like, "Damn, the Rockies and Pirates aren't going to be able to watch their team until May now." <laughs> Uh, What's going I mean, on with that? Why would they? Why would they do that? And because Rob Manfred see, hates baseball. Now we're going to see the alternate sites come back too. Is Rob Manfred hates baseball? Yeah, he just doesn't give a fuck point. about. The, he doesn't give a fuck about the sport. And on that note, that's all we have for this week, Frank pleasure as always thanks for everyone for tuning in remember yep. to rate click, download review and subscribe click like subscribe and rob manfork can go fuck himself <laughs> and on that note take it out with a little song if you have anything nah not today all right well signing off thanks again and screw rob manfraud